All right. All right. Well, one of tonight's most compelling races will be in California. Two House Democrats, you know them, Adam Schiff and Katie Porter, have been battling in the Golden State for the special election to replace late Senator Dianne Feinstein. But a late surge by Republican challenger Steve Garvey has sent them scrambling. Do you think a Republican can win in the Senate in California? But I didn't get into this race not to win. This vibrant California needs somebody who they know and they can trust. I said I'd be a one-term uh, uh, senator, and in that one term, I think I can get a lot done. Let's bring in founder of Golden Together, Steve Hilton. So Steve Garvey's known very well throughout California, maybe even throughout the country. If you're a baseball fan, he played for the Dodgers. Are the Democrats surprised by his come from behind win or lead, I should say, not win? Yes, they're massively surprised because they're incredibly arrogant. They assume, <laughs> Dana, that California is just a total Democratic one-party state. Republicans have got no chance. That was their attitude when Steve Garvey got in the race. And the assumption among the California political press and all the Democrats as well, it's obviously going to be uh, Adam Schiff and Katie Porter. But what it tells you is that this state, my beautiful home state of California, is much more Republican than people think. Now, Steve Garvey's been helped by the fact that we have this top two system, which means that the top two finishers, regardless of party, go through. And because of their arrogance, because they assume that uh, a Republican cannot win, actually Adam Schiff has been spending enormous amounts of money to try and get Steve Garvey into the general election because he assumes mm. that he's going to have a walkover. So you've been, through Golden Together, you've been traveling the state, you've been talking to a lot of people, trying to find some common ground, trying to get the Republican Party at least to say, look, you know, we have a chance here. Is Garvey's run a part of that? Oh, very much so. Look, I've been on the road, um, as you say, and I've been at many events with Steve Garvey. And the really interesting thing is you see the energy from groups up and down the state here in California, there's two things going on. One, people are sick and tired of what's been happening on every single issue. Obviously, the big ones that we see, and very vividly so, on our screens all the time, crime and homelessness, people are sick of that. But when you look at every single issue, California is performing so poorly. Mm -hmm. We have the highest taxes, but also the highest poverty. We spend the most per student in our public schools. We have the worst literacy in America. Mm -hmm. On and on through every issue, people want to change, but what they're looking for is something positive, an alternative. When you hear Steve Garvey speak, he is such a positive individual. He talks about the California dream, what it means to him and his family. I feel exactly the same way. People are looking for hope here in California. So those polls will close, I guess, 11 p.m. tonight, but we'll be paying close attention through all of that and paying attention to you. There's one other thing happening in California today um, on the ballot, and that is a measure to deal with homelessness. Here's a San Francisco district attorney on what she thinks should happen. Putting people in jail does not help treat mental illness. You end up simply releasing them back to the street in the same condition, only for them to cycle back into the system. It is also not humane to leave those who have not yet entered the criminal justice system on the street to suffer in their illness there. If anyone else thinks that the status quo is okay, they're not looking at the same reality that the vast majority of Californians are looking at. What are Californians deciding on that ballot measure today, Steve? Well, first of all, we should say that for years, many of us have been saying that the homelessness crisis in California, we have a third of the, all the homeless people in the country, is really at its heart an untreated mental health and drug addiction crisis. And all along, Democrats were saying, no, 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 it's all about housing. Of course, it's connected to housing, but the mental health and drug addiction part is a massive feature. Now, this ballot initiative is, in a way, Democrats catching up and saying, yes, we do need to do more on mental health. It's another $6 billion. It'll buy some mental health beds and it'll buy some sheltered uh, housing for uh, homeless people, including homeless veterans. That's the positive aspect of it. But here's what it doesn't do. There was a state law passed nearly one decade ago. It's called Housing First. What it means is that you cannot require people who benefit from homeless services to actually get treatment for their drug addiction mm. or alcohol addiction. Okay. And because that is such a big feature, unless you overturn housing first, you're never going to really get to grips with the problem. Right. And well, they've got you out there trying to work on it through Golden Together. Steve Hilton, I'm sure we'll be talking to you throughout the day. Thank you, and we'll talk to you soon.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.